Hello friends, good morning, good afternoon and good evening. So welcome back to the part four, fourth series of uh, Oracle HTTP OHS server. In this uh, session, we will learn about how we can create the domain of OHS in co-located mode. Along with that, we will see the different options, how we can manage this co-located domain of OHS from the EM tool, or you can say from the Fusion Middleware Control tool. So, so far in part one, two, three, four, and my other OHS videos, we have discussed a lot about co-located and standalone mode. So, uh, just to, to, if you have missed those videos, okay, to, to give a brief about that one, standalone mode is a mode of OHS where we install the OHS in a standalone system. That means for that, we don't need to install anything apart from the standalone OHS. But when we talk about the domain in co-located mode, that you have to install the Fusion Middleware infrastructure before installing the co-located mode. So Fusion Middleware infrastructure is another installer of WebLogic that come along with the EM tool, which is also called the Fusion Middleware Control tool uh, for the centralized management of all the products that you have installed in the same middleware home along with the JRF. Okay. And one dependency when we talk about the co-located mode of OHS and that if you are going to create that uh, domain, Okay, uh, with, with where you need the functionality of EM tool to manage it from the EM console and then with the GRF as well. Okay, which is a certain other advanced feature that we will cover in some more other videos. Okay, so for that you need a database as well. That means when we are going to create a domain in co-located mode, then we have two options. One to go with the database as well. That means for that you need to install a database as well where certain schemas will be created for storing some metadata of your OHS and some other components. Okay. But yes, you have another option as well where you can create a co-located mode of OHS without using the database. Okay. That is called a restricted GRF mode. Okay, now what is the scenario when we talk about the co-located mode of domain of OHS, okay? So co-located mode is means that you have installed the web uh, your OHS in a middleware home where you have some other products as well along with your Fusion uh, middleware infrastructure. For example, maybe you have installed the SOA suite, you have installed the IDM, OAM, then web center. There are a lot of middleware products, okay? That means you have installed your OHS along with the other Fusion middleware products in the same Oracle home. And the reason for that is when we have, uh, when we allow the traffic to our application server from the outer world or maybe from the internal world, you can say as an uh, internet or intranet, okay? So basically when we allow the traffic to our application server, okay, then if the traffic is coming from the outer world or, or you can say from the public network, then we allow it to come to my application server from the standalone OHS uh, domain. Okay, which is installed in the uh, DMZ or maybe which you can say the demilitarized zone or you can say the public zone, which I have covered in my video third and fourth, third one, third video. Okay, and because no one allows the tra traffic traffic directly directly come to your application server from the outer world, right? And if we have a, some intra uh, inter intranet traffic, that means which is inside your LAN or maybe inside the secure network of your client or maybe your own. Okay, then you can allow the traffic to, to come to your uh, OHS, which you have installed in your co-located mode in same middleware home. And then from that co-located OHS, you can di divert the traffic to your internal application server. So again, this video is specific on on-demand video, and this is demanded by Deep Shankar. So let us see how we can create a domain and how, can, how we can manage it from the Fusion Middleware Control uh, tool. Okay, so first you have, once you have installed your um, uh, OHS in co-located mode, okay, as we have explained in, in session three, just click on the configuration wizard as mentioned in the screen, config.sh in Unix-based system and then c.cmd for Windows, okay. Select the option, create a new domain and then specify the location of domain, okay. Now second screen is very important where you are selecting the templates. So if you are installing only OHS, which you want to manage via EM console. So as I said, you can install the OHS in a middleware home where you have some other middleware products as well. But if that is not in your case, what you want is you want an OHS, which you uh, want to manage from the EM console or from the present middleware con uh, con control tool. Instead of going to log into server and then modifying the configuration files and doing the configurations in httpd.com in mod underscore WL for redirections, instead of going to server and then modifying the files manually, you just want all the configurations to be managed from the, from the front end, right? In that case, you have to install this uh, OHS 
okay along with fusion metal wear infrastructure and in that case you have to select the option template or oracle http server restricted grf ohs okay so keep uh, keep an eye on the template that we are selecting in that case it is oracle http server restricted grf okay so once you will set the restricted grf for ohs okay it will not ask you for the database schemas okay otherwise if you are if you are installing your ohs okay uh, in, in in along with the other middleware products okay where you have already installed some other product like sova web center etc and then now you are configuring the domain okay in that case you have to select oracle http server co-located ohs so this is a template in that case where it is going to prompt you for the uh, schemas okay uh, that oracle schemas okay so that means it required the database so select the template accordingly where, according to your uh, requirements but in this session i am going to cover without database which is called a restricted jr okay now in next screen select the uh, location for your application where it will install the <clears throat> em jar er file and some maybe few more files then you have to give the username and password for for the administration of your admin uh, admin console right because this is a co-located mode where which is going to be managed from your admin uh, em tool right so in that case there would be an admin server would be created okay which will deploy your fusion middleware control tool or you can say the em control tool from where you are going to manage your ohs so this is the username and password for your weblogic admin user next select the domain uh, do, uh, the domain mode if you want to in development or blockchain mode and then you can select your jdk make sure it is certified with your ohs version okay and this is the screen that i was saying so this is not applicable in our case because we have selected the restricted grf mode okay this is just for the information only if you will select the uh, the non restricted grf okay ohs co located mode template okay it will prompt you this screen where it will ask you to provide the schema details so here you have to provide the schema stb schema details and it will retrieve all the related schema that is there in the database okay but this is not in our case this is just for the information if you go with that option okay now on the next screen uh, select the administration server node manager and the system component okay for the modifications of the default parameters and to specify the mm -hmm. password <clears throat> So this is a screen where you can specify or change the admin user uh, details. If you want to change the name of your admin server and the listen address should be uh, all local address or maybe you can specify the DNS or IP of the machine in which you are going to create this OHS. And then listen port is the default listen port 7001 for your uh, weblogic admin server, right? And in next screen, enter the username and password for your node manager and go with the default option, which is for domain default location. In the next screen, you have to enter the instance name for your OHS. Okay, so whenever we create an instance for OHS, we, we specify the name for that, which is called a system component, right? So we have discussed about in, in other sessions about the system component and Java component. So when we talk about Java component, so WebLogic is a completely Java component because it, it is completely designed in uh, Java code, right? But when we talk about system component, then system components are not purely built on the Java. It may be have a certain uh, development of certain modules in some other languages as well, like C, C++. Okay, that's why we call it system component. So similar to OHS, we have OID, OVD, and some more other system components as well, OUD. Okay, so now let's focus on the OHS only here. Okay, so give a name for your system component, or you mean to say that uh, you have to give a name for your OHS server. So I have given as OHS1. Okay, and the component type is OHS. On next screen, you have to specify the some more details. Okay, for uh, admin host, go with the same default. Okay, and then admin port, you can go again go with the default. Listen address, you can specify the DNS or IP of the machine in which you are installing your OHS. Listen port, you can define according to your requirement. In my case, I have go uh, use the same default seven 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 seven. But most of the time, if it is a secure uh, uh, OHS, okay, then we specify the SSL port, which is a uh, 443 and the default listen port this is a non-SSL which is, we can specify as an 80 port okay but let's go with the for example for testing purpose go with the default one okay and the server you can access with the help of your local host colon the port of your OHS which is 7777 in my case so this we will use for the testing once OHS is installed next you have to create a machine because now this is a co-located again and then your uh, even it is a co-located or standalone the OHS is managed from the node manager so you have to give a name for your machine okay and 
then you can select the listen address for your machine and then specify the port, which is the default 5556. Next, you can specify your OHS component to your node, whatever you have created. And then it will show you a screen with all the details that uh, the kind of applications it is going to be deployed by default. And then it will show you the progress. And but when it is done, it will show you the successful message. You can click on finish. And after that, you can start your uh, node manager web logic and then your OHS with the help of command line, or maybe you can start your uh, OHS from the EM console as well. So, so the sequence would be start your node manager because that would be required to start your OHS and then start your admin console, then go to your admin console, log into your admin console and check uh, the status of uh, the deployments and other, some other resources. Then you can start your uh, component, okay? That means OHS with the help of start component or CMD or SH command in case of Unix systems. Mm -hmm. Okay, and it will prompt you for the username and not username, but for the password of your node manager, which you have given during the creation of your domain. And then you can test your admin console and then you can test uh, the EM console by accessing the uh, listen address and then port and then slash console and slash EM for admin, admin console and for the EM tool, or you can say the fusion middleware control tool. Okay, so once you will log into your EM tool, okay, then you will see the screen, okay, and inside the screen, just if you click on the navigation tool on the left side, okay, then you can see that this is a domain where you have a uh, admin server, then you have a coherence cluster, and then you have a HTTP server with name OHS1, and then click on OHS1, it will show you the respective details on the right side. What is the Oracle home, the ports that we have used, what is the URL for that one, what is the current status, okay, and some other lot of parameters it will show you there okay and then on top of that you will see that there is this option to start up shut down restart so if you want to manage this OHS from the em console that is a, which is a centralized tool for the management of all middleware products okay so you can click on start up shut down or maybe when it is running for restart as well so if i will click on start up okay it will take some time and it will show you the progress of the screen and when it is done it will show you succeeded okay and then once you go to your EM console again, then you will see the status of OHS is up and running a green mark in the up direction. That means it is running. Okay. And similarly, if you wanted to go for a different configuration, then click on OHS1, your instance name, and then your OLL HTTP server, and then you will click on administration. Okay. And once you will click on administration, then you will get a lot of other options like virtual host, performance directive, log configuration, server configurations, MIME configurations, post port configurations, more WL, and then advanced configurations. Okay. And if you want to do a configuration for the redirection, okay, for what is the purpose of OHS? It is for the redirection of to the backend application server site. For that, manually we do the entry in mod underscore WL OHS configurations files. Okay. Or uh, sometimes we, we we may directly edit the http.com file as well. Okay. So for that kind of redirection, just click on the mod WL OHS configuration options. Right. So this is the option that I was talking about. Click on HTTP server administration and then mod WL OHS configuration. Okay. And here you will see all the configurations. So WebLogic, you can enter the values from the front end instead of editing the files manually. You can enter the WebLogic cluster name, your error page in case you have a problem with the OHS or the backend. This error page will be displayed in front of user. Your what would be your WebLogic temp directory, which is used by OHS, right? And there are other uh, lot of configurations you will say there. Right, and then the location. So this location is where we find the backend application server details, the host name and the port number of my managed servers, okay, and the prefixes of my URL. So all these configurations you can perform from the EM console, right? And now similarly, we have some different options there. If you want to see the performance summary, you wanted to uh, start up, shut down, or restart your OHS. If you want to see the log messages or if you want to do the key store configurations for SSL configurations of your OHS, if you want to uh, check the port uses of the port that is in use as of now, you will click on port uses and it will show you all the ports that are in use. So there are, if, once you will install this and then go for the different kind of navigations, okay? And then you can able to see the lot of configurations, lot of options are there. That means you can centrally manage all of your configurations from your EM console. You don't need to directly go to the host and then you don't need to modify the uh, files, any kind of files manually. So hope this for you will find this video useful and thanks for watching this video and stay tuned for a few more interesting videos.